Here, we'll show you how to name compounds containing polyatomic ions. First, we'll show you what polyatomic ions are. Here's an atom of carbon. We'll bring in three oxygen atoms and join them to the carbon using chemical bonds. Notice two of the oxygen atoms have a negative charge. The formula for this polyatomic ion is CO3 2 minus, written like this. The formula shows there is one carbon atom and three oxygen atoms. Notice this ion has two negative charges. So the total charge or net charge on this ion is negative two, shown as two minus on the top right of the formula like this. The name of this ion is carbonate. The carbonate ion is an example of a polyatomic ion. We recognize it as a polyatomic ion because it has more than one kind of atom. In science, poly means many, which also means more than one. Carbonate has a carbon atom and oxygen atoms, and a net charge, which is all shown on the top right of the formula like this. A polyatomic ion acts as a single unit when forming compounds. For example, if we have a calcium ion with a positive 2 charge and a carbonate ion with a negative 2 charge, they will combine with each other and form the compound called calcium carbonate. Notice a polyatomic ion does not change its name when forming a compound. It's called the carbonate ion and the name of the compound is calcium carbonate. A type of rock, like the rock in these cliffs, is called limestone. Limestone is made up of calcium carbonate. Your data booklet gives you a list of polyatomic ions we can use to form compounds. Here is carbonate with the formula CO3 2 minus, but you can see there are many others. Most of the ions in this table are negative ions, or anions. But there is one polyatomic ion that has a positive charge, so it is a cation. It is ammonium with the formula NH4+. Notice there are a few polyatomic ions that have more than one possible name. For example, the polyatomic ion HCO3- can be called either hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate. If a metal cation is combined with a polyatomic ion, we need to determine whether the metal cation has only one possible charge, like the cations highlighted here, or more than one possible charge, like the cations highlighted here. If an element has only one number on the top right of its box, such as silver shown here, it has only one possible charge, so there's no Roman numeral after its name. So Ag plus is simply called silver, the same as its name on the periodic table. But if the cation of an element has more than one possible charge, like copper, which has a 2 plus and 1 plus on the top right of its box, then the charge that it has in a compound must be indicated with a Roman numeral. For example, if copper has a charge of 2 plus, the name is copper with a Roman numeral 2. But if copper has a 1 plus charge, its name is copper with a Roman numeral 1. We determine which charge a cation has using the negative charges on the anion. Let's do a couple of examples of naming compounds with polyatomic ions. Let's say we're asked to name the compound with the formula MgNO32. The metal is magnesium, and we see magnesium has only one possible charge. So the beginning of the name is simply magnesium. Looking at the formula, we see it has more than two capital letters. This means the compound contains more than two elements. And any ionic compound with more than two elements must contain at least one polyatomic ion. So we look at our table of polyatomic ions. Looking at the second part of the formula, we see it is NO3. And NO3 is called nitrate. So the second part of the name is just nitrate. Remember, a polyatomic ion does not change its name when forming a compound. The name remains as nitrate. You may be wondering if we need to say anything in the name to indicate that there are two nitrate ions. Unlike covalent compounds, where we use prefixes, 
In ionic compounds, we don't need to specify the number of a particular type of polyatomic ion in the name. We assume a given formula has the correct ratio of anions to cations to make the charges add up to zero. Therefore, the final name of this compound is just magnesium nitrate. The name of a polyatomic ion in the formula for an ionic compound has no added prefix and no Roman numeral. It is just the name that appears on the polyatomic ion table. Note that the di and dichromate is not an added prefix. It's simply part of the name of this ion. Similarly, the bi and bicarbonate, bisulfate, bisulfide, and bisulfite is not an added prefix. It's simply part of one of the names for these polyatomic ions. Let's do another example. We're asked to name the compound with the formula Cr3PO42. The cation in this compound is the metal chromium. Looking at chromium on the periodic table, we see that it has more than one possible charge. Therefore, the name chromium must have a Roman numeral which indicates its ion's charge in the compound. To find the charge in chromium, we do the following. Write down three CRs for the three chromium ions in the formula, like this, and write down two PO4 ions in the formula like this. Looking on the ion table, we see that the charges on each PO4 ion is negative 3. So the total negative charge is negative 6. Therefore, the total positive charge must be positive 6. For the charges on the three chromium ions to add up to positive 6, the charge on each ion must be positive 2. Because the charge on one chromium ion is positive 2, chromium in the name must have the Roman numeral 2. So the first part of the name is chromium 2. The anion in this compound, PO4, is the polyatomic ion called phosphate. So the second part of the name is phosphate. Remember, we don't add prefixes or Roman numerals to the names of polyatomic ions. So the name remains phosphate, the same as it is on the ion table. And the final name of this compound is chromium 2 phosphate. Let's do another example. We're asked to name the compound with the formula NH4Cl. We notice that this formula has more than two capital letters, the N, H, and C in this case. This means the compound contains more than two elements. Therefore, this compound must contain at least one polyatomic ion. Looking on the table of polyatomic ions, we find the ion NH4 plus on the top left of the table and it's called ammonium. A polyatomic ion does not change its name in any way, so the first part of the name for this compound is just ammonium. The anion in this compound is a single nonmetal Cl, which has a charge of negative one. Remember, a single nonmetal in a compound ends with the letters IDE. So this is called the chloride ion and the second part of the name is chloride. So the final name for this compound is ammonium chloride. An interesting property of ammonium chloride is illustrated if we take some ammonium chloride and add it to water at room temperature. It will dissolve and the temperature will go down a lot. So why did the water get so cold? Here it is, when we first add NH4Cl to the water, the ions are together. But as the ammonium chloride dissolves, the ions break apart from each other, or dissociate, and this absorbs energy from the water, making its temperature go down. There are many possible compounds with polyatomic ions, and they all have different properties. Now you've learned how we name these.